Today is a bit more of a lighthearted one. I wanna go over some ways that you could improve your relationship and communication with your realtor and create the best possible partnership as you look to buy your next home. Hi, I'm Robert Webb, team leader of the Destination NJ Home Selling Team. I'm here to help you navigate all things real estate, specifically focused on helping our clients with buying, selling, and living in the heart of NJ, North and Central New Jersey. If you enjoyed this type of content, make sure that you give this video a like. It helps get this video to more people that could use this information. Now, let's hop into it. The first one is calling or texting your realtor after 10 p.m. and expecting a response. I do understand that some people have less traditional hours and need to talk later on, and to that, I say that is perfectly fine as long as you and your agent are on the same page. But I have had many clients who call me at 11 p.m., and then they text me, and then they keep texting me, and they keep texting me. And we just have to realize that while we agents are in the service business, we also have our own lives and our own sleep schedules to focus on. While we happily work evenings and weekends, since that is the job that we signed up for, when it comes to after hours, maybe it is best sent as an email with the expectation to have a conversation the next day. Number two is not having defined criteria. While I am happy to help people hone in on their criteria and give my opinions on any questions that you may have, ultimately it is up to you to make those decisions. What towns you are gonna live in, what budget you wanna work with, and what kind of homes that you want to buy, that's all up to you. I have had people come to me and just tell me to send them any homes in central New Jersey for around $500,000. It is nearly impossible for me to do that. What schools are you okay with? What commute time works for you? What does around $500,000 even mean? Are you okay with the flood zone? Are you okay with busy streets? These are all things that come into play. And if you are not clear, or at least don't have a solid idea, it is gonna be very difficult for me to help you. Have a question? Bring it to me. But spend some time thinking about what you want, and then I will be able to do a much better job guiding you from there. Next up is making ridiculous offers. Let's say a house is priced at $600,000, and it is priced pretty fairly for that market. But you decide that you wanna go ahead and offer $475,000 just because. It isn't that the house is overpriced or that there's a major defect with it. It is simply that you want a deal. And while I have no problem going in and negotiating for the best possible deal for the best possible price, when people make ludicrous offers with no fair rationalization, it is just a waste of time for everyone involved. And it makes me worried that we are never gonna put a deal together. And that's a lose-lose because you don't get a house and cannot take part in the insane benefits that come with home ownership. And I lose because this is my livelihood and this is how I make money. So while I'm very happy to get you the best deal, if there is never gonna be a deal to be had, then what's the point? Number four is the shadow inventory. While I do think this one was a lot more prevalent 40 years ago, the fact is today that all of the inventory on the market is online. So when people come to me and tell me to show them the off-market listings, like I just have 10 seller properties that I'm not actively marketing and the seller is just magically okay with me being the only person to bring someone through their house, I just shake my head. Most off-market deals happen because a buyer and a seller already know each other, not because the realtor is hiding inventory from the public so that they could secretly secure and double-end a deal. And even if that was true, is that agent really the one that you want to work with? Someone who isn't fully exposing their seller's deals to the entire market, helping them get the best possible price and only looking out for their interest in their payday? I wouldn't wanna work with that person. I wanna work with the person that takes time to understand what I am looking for and guides me to success. Number five, working with multiple agents at once. I've had people call me and after some questions being asked, I come to find out that they are already working with another agent in the same marketplace and sometimes even two or three. As I mentioned before, I only get paid when the deal closes. 
Meaning that if I'm committing my time, my energy, and my knowledge to this, I wanna be certain that you and I are in a committed relationship to each other. I am more than happy to spend the time needed helping you find that home. But if I don't see a pathway forward to getting paid, it simply doesn't make sense for me and you to continue working together. Last but not least, listening to people who haven't done anything with regards to real estate in the past 10 years. It is great that your best friend's mom was a realtor in 1998, but things are so much different today than they were 10 or 20 years ago. That experience simply just doesn't translate to the current market. I do this every day, day in and day out, and I bring you that knowledge to help you overcome challenges in the current market. But if we are gonna be buying a home based on what was happening in the 2010 market, it is going to be a very painful experience for both you and me. I'm not saying that you shouldn't be listening to your friends and family and their opinions. They are looking out for your best interest and I can truly appreciate that. But I do have a problem when it is completely outdated information that you are working with. The fact is that times change and it is my job to adapt with them and work with the current market conditions that we have. So listen to all opinions, take them in, but don't forget to mix in a healthy dose of the current market conditions and reality to help you formulate the best decision for yourself. Be honest, have you done any of these? I have ran into all of these and all sorts of obstacles and personalities. That is what makes this business so fun. It is always different and always changing, but sometimes we just need to get on the same page. That's all I got for you. If you wanna learn more about me and my team and buying or selling a home here in the heart of New Jersey, I wanna invite you to click the first link down below in the description and check out our website. We would love to have a chat with you about your needs, what you're looking for, and how we could help.